Good afternoon, everyone. Let's go ahead and start. It's 3 p.m. My name is Valentina Kuskova, and I've been given the honor of chairing this section. So let me first of all introduce myself and then shamelessly introduce and promote my own laboratory. Um, I am an assistant professor here at Harris School of Economics at the Faculty of Management and at the same time chair of the International Laboratory for Applied Networks of Research, which is uh, with Stanley Wasserman as a scientific supervisor. We work actually very closely with Maria and people and a number of laboratories and centers that study networks throughout High School of Economics. So I'm very glad to welcome Daniel, Daria, and Alex today as our presenters. We will try to mostly stick to the guidelines um, of the timelines that set for us, 15 minutes for the presentation, 15 minutes for Q&A, but I was just told that we have half an hour before our reception. So if the scientific thought flows freely, I have no reason to interrupt it, so we can just stick around a little bit longer. So, uh, as to shameless self-promotion, I'll take another minute. You can look up the International Laboratory for Applied Social Network on the HEC website. It's anrhc.rd. Um, with that, I'm going to turn the floor over to Daniel. Um, we have been cooperating on a number of projects we have known each other for a while. So, I am delighted to present his first work, which is Social Networks and Classes and Student Psychological Comfort. I also want to mention that if you're looking for a section that's titled uh, Studies of the Public Sector Institutes, that's a different room. Yeah, it's not here. Okay, so we are social uh -huh. networks. So right now is the time to leave if you're in the wrong spot. Nobody leaves, <laughs> okay. Yay. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. I'm, I'm delighted to be here. I, uh, um, I was, I, I do remember five years ago in you know, a wonderful conference, you know, for the fifth anniversary, now it's 10th, and um, we are growing and we're all becoming mature, and definitely, you know, Center for Institutional Studies is mature, and I'm, uh, it's an honor for me to present our research of our science and education laboratory here to you, dear colleagues. That's the, uh, uh, the, the, the three of us is the main team uh, who, who do social network analysis within the group. There are other students, but we, we co-author most of the papers. And um, today I will present you some of the studies you've already seen, maybe if you follow our work in something new. But first thing to say uh, is the why, how we're motivated for doing research that we do. Uh, 15,000 of hours. It's about the time students spend in school. Uh, from the age 7 to the age 17 or 18, they spend a lot of time in school. But unfortunately, educational research pay less attention to the social environment and the emotional comfort of students in school than to educational outcomes. because. We see education as a production, we have production functions, we have, you know, goals, you know. And I will talk a little bit about it because even I as a sociologist cannot escape from the mainstream of thinking that the main result of the school has to be good grades and educational achievement. But actually I think sometimes that main results, you know, of the 15,000 of hours of school should be, you know, happiness of a child who spend these, you know, 15,000 hours. Just 80 hours, you know? Good school. People should enjoy it. We all know that actually in college, people give back uh, money into their college, not for being well taught, but having good time at college, you know? Good memories, they identify with college, so they're willing, you know, to donate uh, money to the endowment. Uh, so, uh, but in general, emotional comfort of, um, of child, children and adolescents is very, very important. And our approach is in studying school environment by measuring both attitudes, what children think about schools with some, you know, reasonable instruments, um, along with the study of social networks, of uh, mainly friendships, but also support, help, advice, and aggression. Who is bullying whom, you know? How does it work all together? All types of social relations in, in school. 
And uh, we, uh, we are having, you know, doing large scale surveys. So the, the first study I will present is about 100 schools, 5,000 students. And the, the sec for the second study, we pulled all the data we have, which is about 200 schools, you know, over 500 classes, 2,000 cliques in classes, and about 11,000 students. And here's the time to say what, what's written here, that uh, we owe a deep uh, um, uh, debt of gratitude to higher school of economics and its funding mechanisms, not only for funding generously these surveys, but also for being patient while we were learning to collect data and how to analyze it. Because I have to confess, when I first started the work, and I thought that we should study you know, ethnic issues in schools and migration and minority children in schools, we went into, and we wanted to learn something uh, about it, so we went, we started with schools which has concentration of migrant and minority children, right? We learned a great deal out of it, but not good data, because, you know, we had a sample bias. So basically, what we did then, we dumped, in, we dumped the data, we redesigned the instrument, the questionnaires we had, we, we got much more smart, and then we launched our main survey in St. Petersburg, which was about 100 schools and then more and more, and now we know how to do it, it's just, sort of in our hands, you know, it's incorporating our body, the, 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 the knowledge how to construct instruments. And uh, I really do uh, um, feel gratitude to, to the uh, patience of, of, of my colleagues who looked at me. Uh, one of my colleagues from other university was saying like, what do you do? I said, I'm actually like learning how to study that. And says, isn't it too expensive? For the state to fund your education this way, <laughs> you know, it is indeed. So the first study: popularity in academic performance. Uh, Socioeconomic popularity, which is basically in degree in network, right, is a measure of social acceptance and status. So acts of deference, you know, when people nominate someone as a friend, it really does not matter whether they they're reciprocal, whether they really go out together. But <coughs> what happens is that I am, when I'm saying that I'm a friend of Maria Gutkevich, I, I, I act, right, in a status-related manner. Because it's like in Facebook, who is befriending whom, right? Either me asking Maria, you know, to, to accept me as a friend, or Maria is asking me to accept her as a friend. That's, that's the status relations. And also, of course, is with any status, is the, the measure of social acceptance. And um, uh, we can imagine that in different local contexts, you know, the acceptance of, of, of children in the sense would differ uh, depending on, on their characteristics. Uh, for this study, we wanted to see how popularity relates to academic achievement and motivation. Basically, um, my idea was that I wanted to find schools in which good graders are punished by isolation by their peers. Because I thought that this is the, the worst case, you know, when in school there's a social environment which marginalizes good graders and punish um, educational achievement. Um, for that, we started to look at motivation, and we wanted to, to find schools with such low motivation in general, aggregated measure, that they would be punishing, you know, there, we might find the effect of isolation of good graders. So that's a scale. Really, it's not important, I just want to say that it, it has subscales. So actually, this is a normative part of the scale, right? Like, school is a waste of time, or the opposite would be school is very important, right? Most of the children say, yes, education is very important. They don't believe it, but they say it anyway, right? This is more interesting subscale. It's engagement, right? And they take it more seriously. 
we know that answering this part of the scale, they take it seriously. And, uh, they say, yes, we believe that it's, education is important, but, you know, there's nothing to discuss about it after, after classes or something like that. So here's its distribution, that's you know, Z scale. And uh, we were looking for low motivated classes in which we might expect the isolation of, of, uh, of, uh, of good graders. <coughs> and uh, uh, at the end, I'll say that we were actually performing many runs of the models, uh, looking, you know, first we took all of these classes, right? Then we move here in order to find when we have the, the, the stable effect. You'll see. Later. So this is this is the there are ideas that you know increase decrease the gender effect in and in, in classroom context. And you know, you know, network people like networks. So here's an, you know, I'll show you some some uh, coefficients, but basically that tells the story. Which is if a boy has good grades, he's punished for good grades. If a girl has good grades, she's always accepted, even by, by local hooligans, as a good girl and as a good friend. So we actually um, um, ran P2 model, which is multi-level social network analysis modeling. Uh, we ran it for, for different groups, for low motivated average and high motivated, and we performed HLM, hierarchical linear modeling, uh, with with this data, and uh, what you get, of course, you get that um, in in high motivated classes, boys are very modestly, you know, um, positively accepted with good grades, and uh, and for low motivated classes, we have pretty strong effect for punishing boys. So here's how that goes. That's, that's the boys, the girls in general. And uh, these are boys, boys in highly motivated classes, average, and then low motivated classes. It turns down. Uh, and the, um, the good news is that actually it's only 6-7% of Petersburg schools in which you have this effect. Because I expected to find it about 20-40%, right? Because we know that, in general, popularity is based not on good grades. Popularity, to follow what John and I was saying earlier, popularity is actually mostly based on low-level aggression. If, I mean, it's well-known fact uh, um, for the studies of popularity and aggression that uh, when people are too aggressive, they're not liked. But if they're shy, they're not liked too. You know, so they have to be moderately aggressive to be to be popular, right? And uh, it's not clear that good graders are in general more aggressive, right? Uh, they might be more aggressive in in special schools like physics and math bias schools, you know, in which you know doing great math is also adds to your self confidence, but not in average schools. Uh, and uh, to the second study, we thought that uh, that much data that we have, uh, you know, with, with many schools, with many classes, would allow us to study the effect of network topology. Because uh, we have so many networks, then we can run very, very good multi-level models in which Network topology would be a characteristic on, an, on a class or you know, school level. So, for example, modularity. Does modularity of a network within a class affect various attitudinal uh, effects like you know, belonging? Whether uh, it's easier for you to identify with school and class if the whole class is one network, tightly knitted, or, or not. Is it important that the class is 
broke into the factions, fighting with each other, or it's not important. Basically, that was the 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 the, um, the idea. And the sense of school belonging is a measured positive relation between a student and social environment. Um, it's opposite to social exclusion, right? And indeed, it's positively, you know, uh, uh, related to psychological comfort. You know, the the scale for belonging was introduced by Goodenow, who defined it as a sense of being liked, respected, and valued by fellow students and teachers in school. So we 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 use this five item, you know, belonging scale. Uh, it scales up really well, we think, and uh, is meaningful. And here are uh, some of the results and, and hypothesis. The first is we think that basically um, it's a trivial hypothesis <laughs> that sense of belonging would be positively related to the embeddedness of, of a student in a classroom friendship network. And uh, um, on the classroom level, our idea was the sense of belonging would be positively related to group cohesion as measured as the absence of modularity and the uh, density of networks. But the question remains, it's not an hypothesis, but we, as a question has remained for us, or remained before we did the study, uh, which network is most important for you, for example? The class or this small uh, clique of your friends around you? Right? It's, it's, it's not clear. So what can affect sense of belonging? Gender? Minority status, migration status, which are different. And that's one of the, the things uh, uh, I'm proud of in our research that we, we ask everybody how they moved, you know, where they studied before the school, when they came to Petersburg, to Moscow, or Tomsk, Omsk, Minsk, where we do our surveys, uh, because we want to differentiate between minority and migration. So we have all the Russians who moved from Tomsk to St. Petersburg, so the Russian families. We know, so we know the effect of migration as such, and effect of ethnicity. And then the family socioeconomic status. Uh, for some um, attitudinal characteristics, socioeconomic status is important. For me, it was a surprise in our other survey to find that actually school satisfaction is related to socioeconomic status. Independently of the school status. So it's so we controlled for you know, the prestige of the school, right? And uh, my my answer to the puzzle is that basically school is an instrument which is hard to play. And the family resources help you to play the school, to be satisfied. <coughs> so it might be that actually also belonging is related to socioeconomic status. So people who have higher status, who have more family resources, who are better read, so to speak, you know, have better identification with school environment. Possible. And then, you know, what variables we use it's in degree, out degree, you know, different types of centrality. Uh, um, indeed, um, transitivity, click size, and um, so, and modularity on the class level. So how well class network can be broken into components. And um, okay, so we'll start again with with the pictures that tell the story, so you can see that. Indeed, you know, centrality is related to, to the sense of belonging. And um, so that's the, whatever centrality you take, it can be, you know, in degree or eigenvector, which um, uh, take into account the, the uh, in degree 
uh, parameters of, of friends of your friends, <coughs> that would influence belonging. Girls, you know, are better um, in identifying themselves with schools. In recent migrants, irrespective of ethnicity, indeed, have no sense of belonging. And ethnicity is such, and minority status, doesn't influence it, which is very good. Actually, with all our network studies of Russian schools, uh, I started to think better of Russian schools. Because in general, the level of, 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 of minority segregation, isolation, and belonging of minority is, is on par with Europe. My, my colleagues in, in Amsterdam or some other places are getting basically the same results. So uh, Russian schools are doing good in terms of you know, lack of xenophobia and acceptance of, 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 of minority students. Then you have what's important, of course, is transitivity, right? It's how well groups are connected by measuring of, of triangles. And it works both on the clique level, on the class level, and it turns out, which is the most important for us, result for us, is that clique level is more important than the class level. Uh, and um, how class is broken into uh, into groups is not significant. Whether it's many groups or there are small groups, it's really not important. Uh, the size of a clique is moderately important because it's easier if you have a, a high transitivity clique with, 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 with high N of members, it's easier to identify with. It's that's, that's simple. So, uh, basically, that's what we have that lower sense of belonging for immigration status, not related ethnicity. And that's, you know, I, I basically reiterate here, you know, the, the results. And um, that's it. Um, and you can have any, ask any questions. Um, uh, I have a couple of questions. One is, do you have measures of the height and weight of the children or the students? Uh, weight? No. Height and no. Because we have a study which is now being reviewed in the journal based upon Nizhny Novgorod um, peer study in which we found that BMI has no effect on grades unless they're outsiders. So we segmented the group of people living in Nizhny Novgorod versus from outside and moved to live in a dorm or something. So if you live in a dorm, you, you don't come from Nizhny Novgorod, then higher BMI lowers your number of friends, and then friends affect your GPA. But friends have no effect on GPA for people whose mm -hmm. families are from the mm -hmm. So there's the conditional migrant mm -hmm. effect of certain types of, so that's why I care about the, yeah. the, the way. That's, that's, it's, it, you're, you're right to care about that. And uh, uh, here, what, uh, what, what I'm presenting is the results of our major cross-sectional survey. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, 100 schools in St. Petersburg, 100 schools in Moscow region, and after we did it, we moved to more fine-grained research. So now, while you are studying students, we are studying students in technical colleges. Sure. Because that's the same effect. They, they just a little bit earlier, at the age 15, they come together for the first time, so you have T0. You can study the network longitudinally, how it emerges. In there, we're interested in BMI and other characteristics, including you know drinking and smoking. The other thing I would caution you, and so this is an advertisement again for my, the way I do things, is you use social economic status all the time. And social economic status has to be separated from genetics. Because the problem is that social economic status is correlated with many characteristics which are heritable. So it, it's not clear in many cases whether it's the status that makes them more open, more studious, more willing, or it's the generic inheritance from the parents. And both of those, and because there are separate twin studies, for instance, are things like, the famous one is for a long time, the sociologists claim that children of divorced parents are more likely to get divorced. But that's recently been blown apart because people look at adoption studies. So it turns out a child adopted by people who don't divorce or divorce, the child's propensity to the divorce is correlated to the biological mother's propensity to divorce, not to the people who adopted. 
So that blows all the earlier. Thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. Thank you for a uh, uh, very interesting talk. I, I want to raise the, uh, the question about uh, you know the classic problem. You know, what's the problem with boys? Um, like, why uh, does you know why is it that uh, boys tend to um, be punished more for greater achievement or you know motivation? I mean, is it a matter of you know I hate this term, but like hegemonic masculinity that like you know maybe the gender roles for you know what constitutes masculinity is much smaller uh, than what constitutes the you know, normative rules for femininity. I'm, what are your thoughts on Yes, that would, be, that would be my answer. Um, we haven't figured out how to study it meaningfully, besides doing pure anthropology, which would be hard to connect directly to this data. But um, it looks like there are different types of masculinity. Actually, so the, uh, well, basically, I would say things like that, um, that in, in, in uh, physics and math school, to be macho would be to do math, right? I mean, it is, because it's a sport. It is a sport. So if you're good at sport of math, right, it's highly masculine thing to do. And on the opposite side of the spectrum would be, you know, working class background school in which masculine thing to do would be to beat each other, basically, or, you know, hang out together and, and not care about education. So that's what, what would happen. And so there is uh, a change. And we, we, we were thinking that we actually should study of which boys girls find attractive. You know, not asking boys, you know, about masculinity, right? But because somehow in, in physics and math schools, you know, girls always, always like boys who do math well. They also happen to play guitar and happen to be good looking. I don't know why it happens, but that's, you know, go to any 57, 239 schools, you know, you know, famous 239 in Petersburg. You'll, you'll get this, this thing in general. Yes, I, I think it's it's sort of. I mean, I mean, uh, I would be the, the last sociologist to teach Bourdieu, but that's sort of it's like a habitus, you know. So there is segmentation of, of schools, and then if you get into this school, then you learn learn this body technique of being masculine by doing math, sort of. Yes, it is. Do you have a question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have two small questions. The first one is uh, over here you show the results. Uh, all these results are for all of the schools with deviant behavior, yes? No deviant, but this low motivation behavior. So you somehow aggregated all your networks? Uh, no, I mean the, okay. Uh, uh, where is the? Um, no, that's, that's uh, okay. I mean, we, uh, I have to go back to that, right? No, that's the, it's, it's all the, it's all the schools, and uh, just here, you know, um, we, you know, it's, it's constructed regression lines for, for three types of schools. Um, and the, 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 the problem for us was how to, um, how to define low motivated, so we get the effect, right? So when, so it's, you know, the line is always this, and, you know, when, you know, when we go down, when we'll, we'll give, we'll have a, you know, sort of, you know, change in, in, threshold. in regression, yeah, threshold effect. Uh, and the second question is, it's very small. Would you show me, please, the table with P2, P2 model? Yes, it's... Which one? The, the, this one, yes. Over here. Um, I wanted to ask you, over here you have uh, in the density variance, you have girl to girl, and it is not a significant parameter for high motivated classes. And for boy to boy, no. uh, okay. it's, uh, it's significant. Uh, how could you explain it? Maybe we do not have over here gender monopoly for girls, so we do not have the cluster of girls. The seg uh, this segregation works only for boys. Oh, yes, I mean, you, you mean here, right? Uh, 
uh, no, here for, for highly motivated. For highly motivated? Okay, what's yeah, the, yeah, where is the, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I haven't thought of it. So boy to boy will be significant, right? And girl to girl wouldn't be. Uh, uh, can think on the spot, you know, that, that would tell us that girls have no segregation in these schools. So, so you mean, gen that this means that the gender segregation, there wouldn't be gender segregation, high motivated classes? I'm, I'm sort of confused. Uh, what was your suggestion? I was thinking that maybe, uh, how can you tell me the story about it? I was thinking that maybe boys, they're trying to create their own clusters and girls, they're trying just to create their friendship with uh, anyone. And um, well, I mean, hard to say. Usually, I, I don't remember, but in general, um, the, the uh, gender uh, homophily is the strongest yeah. in, in every, I mean, okay, well, I should, I, I'll remember this and I will run the, you know, uh, in order to see the, the difference in homophily on gender. Yeah, there, it, it is interesting. I haven't paid attention to it. Thank you. Well, unfortunately, uh, yeah. the time is up, so I'm Absolutely. sure there are more interesting questions, but maybe we can talk during the reception. So um, thank you very much again.